And then of your time to wrap your mind around divine perception. Cause even the most mindless and spiritually blind can be a spectator in a theater of God's magnificent design. And you would incline your ears and your eyes to these sounds and these signs. We would attempt to rightly refine and align your crooked set, but we not imply that a sunset or an ocean can begin to set in mind that the Son of Man began to set in redemptive motion. The morals, meaning, and devotion, heart, mind, emotion, substance, significance, and truth cannot be explained or reduced to a big bang explosion. Because this character of nature cannot be known through natural revelation and shown through random acts of figments of your imagination. We, the beautiful eulogy, attempt to communicate audibly and visually to help you hear and see the glory of God clearly through the vital lens. Life is in the hands of your love, everlasting. I saw where I finished, pick it back up where I left it. I'm just a man of unclean lips, I've only seen a glimpse. But everywhere I look, I see his fingerprints. All things were made through him. We received this revelation, so we reflect it when we breathe. And the concepts we conceive are born of spiritual seed, manifest in the material realm. His musical composition, the rhythm of heartbeats, transformed by the gospel in godly wisdom. I'm an instrument of his mercy, unworthy to still use his means. The beauty of the eulogy through his death. We are truly free, free indeed. The condemnation and the punish of our sin was abolished on the cross, and He alone accomplished it. God made Himself known, exposing His own nature and His glory through His Son. The revelation of our Savior, the fullness of God, born in human form, deity in the flesh, bringing the Spirit and the Word to open our eyes so we can see correct the vital lens. <laughs> Weapons, more armor for protection. It's a testament of my faith, and I know the answer, but it's 
instead I'm just guessing Like I forgot that God was my father And I was set apart for his own possession This word is my armor and my protection Against the enemy's deception But said I question How could I receive such an incredible blessing When I feel like I'm less than Because I went through a divorce and I'm a second rate Christian I know that's a lie So I won't listen through Christ I'm forgiven I'm being formed in his image According to God I was called from the darkness Into his marvelous light He is near to the broken heart And faithful to finish what he started Faithful to finish what he started. Struggle to identify most of my misplaced anger and rage Dealing with a whole of emotional consequences Based on the way I was raised I'm feeling for affection and affirmation Adjust the performance to get attention And gain some sort of acceptance But found I was always rejected and pushed away Deep scars, feelings of not belonging Caused tall emotional walls Any attempt to recover from the loss of my confidence Was incredibly small This residual effects of abandonment Had me observing my character flaws And viewing them all as insufficiently capable Of relating or growing with God I believe these these lies to be true for me. My experience was the proof for me. Up to the point where I could sense Christ's relentless love and complete pursuit of me. And spoke to me, offering me hope and life through his word, showing me his beauty, changing my perception and giving me perspective of the way that God truly viewed me. A man who was prized and pardoned, chosen before the world's foundation, his own possession, his way of priesthood. I'm part of his holy nation. I'm his friend, I'm valued, I'm completely cared for. Enough for Christ to purchase. According to God, I'm an adopted child with intimate access created with purpose. I'm his friend and valued, I'm completely cared for, enough for Christ to purchase. According to God, I'm an adopted child with intimate access created with purpose. Just as a, as a quick word, um, so it's beautiful eulogy, I mean it's obvious a lot of our songs uh, we use to convey how God has revealed himself and how he is related with us. And uh, in particular, we find ourselves as three men who were sinners, guilty before God, and yet God was gracious to us. And in being gracious to us, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place that through faith in him, we might be forgiven of our sins and inherit from God eternal life. Because of that, praises for God overflow from our hearts, not as a religious duty, not as a moral benchmark, but just as an appropriate response to Amen. God's goodness. Woo. <laughs> Ten years ago, uh, I did a show at this, at this very same venue with a group I was in called Lightheaded. We used to do shows in Portland, Oregon. And at that time, kind of as a slowly growing, maturing Christian, I at least always had this desire to at least convey from the stage that Jesus Christ was our personal Lord and Savior. And I remember after one show, these girls came up to us and they're like, we love coming to your shows, but it seems at the end of your show, you make it about Jesus and it kind of <laughs> divides us. And I was thinking about it in that moment and in many moments onward that when it comes to Jesus, there's no such thing as a neutral position, right? The uniqueness of his identity, the claims he made, and the claims that those who believe upon him make creates some type of reaction or response. For us, as those who have identified ourselves as sinners guilty before God, who have found our pardon through Christ's sacrificial death, that response is to worship him one of the most popular Bible verses, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but instead inherit eternal life. You see, this popular verse presents kind of this polarizing reality, right? To believe in Christ, which is God's great demonstration of his love, means that those who believe in him should not perish, but instead have eternal life. Well, what is the implications of the fact that we should not perish through believing in him? That apart from believing in him, we should perish. So when we think about the gospel message, right, and, and it even says that God sent Jesus not to condemn the world, and we think, well then, why would there ever need to be a message of judgment? And yet, 
That very popular passage even goes on to say, anyone who believes in him is not condemned. Yet, anyone who does not believe in him is condemned already. See, the message is that God sent his son into the world to save sinners because sinners needed saving. And so apart from Christ, there is no one else or nothing else sufficient for salvation, for a right standing before a holy God. So it is in Christ that we find our salvation from the wrath that we deserved and earned in our sin. And now convinced by God that we are guilty before him, we declare the same thing of ourselves. That we might trust not in ourselves, not in our religious duty, not in our positive thinking, but trust in the one who truly can save. Jesus Christ, the one who came down from heaven, became a man. He was tempted in every way as we are, yet he was without sin. The Father spoke from heaven, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. And yet this world in its dark state was not pleased with Jesus, the Son of God. In fact, he was met with a response of hatred by the world that he came to, eventually leading to him being nailed to a cross. And yet Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. See, it was the purpose for which he came, the purpose for which God sent him, that on that cross... He was taking upon himself the punishment for the sins of all who would believe upon him. Yes, it is a dividing message in the sense that it demands a response and it creates polarizing responses. But it is also a uniting message in that mankind who is separated from God in our sin, now through Jesus Christ, can be united back to God. And all the division that we see in our world is the outworkings and the result of human sin. The betrayal we experience, the pain, the lies, the stealing, the cheating, the violence. It is all the outworkings and manifestations of human sin. And yet, God so loved the world that he gave up his son. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, which is what was supposed to happen, right? The wages of our sin is death, but should not perish, but instead receive eternal life. It is that glorious message that though it brings about division, though it brings about polarizing views, we see it as the message by which we are united to God and experience fellowship with him, and therefore we praise him. And we praise Jesus, our risen Lord, because though he died on the cross for our sins, three days later, he rose from the grave and he reigns forever as the everlasting king. The gospel promise tonight, hear this, is that anyone, regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of their economic status, regardless of how gifted or talented they are, regardless of the sins or scars of their past, anyone who repents of their sin and believes upon Jesus has the promise that they will be forgiven of their sins and inherit eternal life from God their Father. Thank you, Amen. 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 Because of that, we, we long actually to be with Jesus. This next song is called Acquired in Heaven. <coughs> to the hearts of the inhabitants of the new earth and receive a crown only to cast it down at the feet of the resurrected Jesus in a perfect ceaseless form of worship singing glory to the liberating king who came not to conquer kingdoms but conquer hearts and restore men back to what they were intended for and escape from this life marked by anguish a great fountain of love that flows from heaven's gates awaits you so you can take this world its joys and its fleeting pleasures but give us Jesus our future hope and our greatest treasure the fulfillment of our expectation with nothing to separate us nothing to hinder the saints from the greatest expression of adoration finally fit with language to describe
and bring us into your presence so to know you and behold you is our heart's desire there is nothing higher nothing great greater to acquire holy 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 is the song of the choir your people sing your praises gathered from all the nations we were chosen to be holy and blameless before the earth's foundation and it's only on the basis of your glorious grace and we will never grow tired of gazing upon your face Falling before your feet, worshiping at your throne. Your appearance is like carnelian and precious gemstones, like nothing we've ever seen. And your glory never fades. The Lamb of God who was slain to wash away sin's stain. We were ransomed by your blood. Your loss was our gain. Yet you live forevermore, Lord, forever you will reign. The King of all kings, name above every name. And everyone who trusts in you will not be put to shame. Everyone. 